Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews. Tonight we're going to talk about Power Rangers Unlimited Air to Darkness issue number one, written by L.L. McKinney with art by Simon Ragazzoni. Now this issue is all about this character right here, Astronema. Now this is, uh, she is a character that is a long and storied within the Power Rangers franchise between In Space and Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. Unfortunately, she is a character that I am pretty unfamiliar with. I have not had the pleasure of watching either of those two series. So so uh, all I really know about her is just what I can get from read, uh, read, reading her Wikipedia pages if I can remember how to speak English for this video. So this issue is all about her upbringing and delving deep into her origin story, how she was raised by Ecliptor and Dark Spectre and all of that good stuff within there. There's a lot of really good character development here that I really appreciate even though I don't know much about this character. I'm not uh, terribly connected to this character. I know what I've read on Wikipedia and fan com and things like that, but I don't feel connected uh, to this character because I haven't actually watched the character um, in, in live action. But being that as it may, uh, this is a really good issue to help uh, develop her and help humanize the character, seeing her as a young girl going through the trials and tribulations that she does, uh, fighting against her peers, some of which are other f very familiar uh, Power Rangers characters, which we'll get into as we get into the pages here a little bit. So um, I really appreciated this um, as someone that doesn't know know the character very much uh, to help me get a little bit more familiar with her and I'm sure fans out there that really know who this character is between Caron and um, or Karen I'm not sure how you pronounce her name my apologies I've gotten in trouble with pronunciations before and uh, uh, no Caron and Astronema um, I'm sure you guys that know and love this character absolutely adored this book right here I would liken it to me being uh, having watched phase one of the MCU and then jumping like straight to like end game or something like I know who a lot of these characters are and I know the general framework that we're working in but there's a lot of missing pieces there and a missing uh, character development that I can't quite connect A to B to C I'm missing B there um, a little bit but I can still appreciate uh, the material for for what it is so I'm sure I'm going to miss a lot of uh, characters and easter eggs and stuff like that that are throughout this book that you uh, Power Ranger sweaties out there are going to pick up on and please let me know what they are down in the comments last uh, in the last video I did, uh, Noble AH left an amazing comment on there talking all about uh, some cool, cool Power Ranger stuff, and I truly, truly appreciate uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, I really enjoy this comic for uh, the character development. It gives uh, these villain characters, which sometimes have some of the better character development, um, but I do feel like I'm missing something because I don't know these characters, but uh, I'm sure that you guys that do know these characters a lot more intimately and are more connected to them than I am got a lot more out of this and I hope you did. So with that all being said, let's go ahead here and jump into the pages. We're probably going to go through it a little bit quicker uh, than normal. This is a pretty thick book. It was an a $7.99 cover price. Um, there's a lot to get to in there. And again, I'm not, there's not, there's some stuff that I'm missing, uh, but we'll, uh, I'll call out the things that I do know as we, uh, as we go through it. All right, so we open it up here, and we have Astronema fighting a Power Ranger team that looked kind of familiar to me, but I didn't know from what season they were from. And uh, after doing some research on the Power Rangers subreddit, they have a f uh, full spoiler thread there of people discussing this, which uh, was very helpful to me. Found out that this Power Rangers team that we see, the Red Ranger 4 um, right here, and then the, the Pink and Green Rangers over here. This is, uh, I believe it's Sun Blaster Flash. Man, I can't remember the um, uh, the Japanese name for it. My apologies, but this is, I believe, a Power Rangers team that was from the tenth season of Super Sentai from 1986 to 1987, and it was one that never got an American uh, adaptation. So it is really, really cool that Boom Studios is reaching back into those Power Ranger vaults and grabbing these um, uh, these characters or these Power Ranger teams that never got to see um, airtime or play or an adaptation adaptation over here in the States and uh, connecting them to the larger Power Rangers lore. Really, really cool stuff. I, I absolutely appreciate that kind of stuff. So as we see um, here, uh, Astronema is just laying waste to them, absolutely uh, destroying them. We see a couple of them here that appear to be dead, uh, specifically um, uh, red and blue right here. And we see uh, pink talking and then um, green uh, getting away. And as she's uh, you know going on her mission to 
kill all of the Power Rangers because she is under the impression that uh, Power Rangers killed her family, and that's why she is uh, the way that she is, working for uh, Ecliptor and Dark Spectre, eventually becoming the, I believe, Princess of Evil, and then even the Queen of Evil, I think, uh, later on is what I read uh, in my readings for, for this character. So, uh, here she is tearing through this Power Rangers team, trying to find out where Zordon is so she can go and, and take him down. That's what she's asking uh, right here. And so the Pink Ranger from Flashman asks, uh, why are you doing this? There's no way you can win. And she says, win? The point isn't to win. It's to make sure fewer Rangers live to see tomorrow. So she doesn't even need to, to win. All she wants to do is kill Rangers and chew bubblegum. And I'm pretty sure she's out of bubblegum the way she's going about uh, killing Rangers uh, right here. Uh, so one of the Rangers does manage to get away and there's this continuing theme of, of failure um, that she has to face within herself that, that carries throughout the book. It kind of starts here, um, at least within the narrative of the book, not necessarily within her continuity. Um, she lets one of the Rangers get away and she kind of fails and when she gets back to her ship, uh, the, the workers there are telling her that Ecliptor has called and sent a message and she says, yeah, fine, I'll, I'll call him back later and goes to her room to kind of um, sulk a little bit, I think is probably the best word for it. And she says here, the ranger escaped. No, you got distracted and lost a target. Unacceptable. Ecliptor would have your head if he knew. And the master, you're supposed to be better than this, Kay. You need to be better. You're not that little girl, not anymore. And so from there, we go into our flashbacks where she was a little girl here training with Ecliptor and the rest of her class right here. Now, the two guys in the class, I don't know if those are um, characters that we know, but I believe if the um, the the subreddit was correct, the the girl here is actually Divatox. They call her uh, D and Divatox was the main villain for Power Rangers Turbo, uh, originally appearing in Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, a movie that I tried my damnedest to actually watch, but I think I only made it about halfway through because that was a terrible, terrible movie. I'm sorry, guys, if you love that movie, but man. I, I could not make it through it. Maybe when I was a kid, it, I could have made it through, but as an adult, without my daughter watching with me to give me an excuse to keep watching, I just, I could not make it through that one. So during our, our training session here, looks like uh, Caron, or K as we're going to call her here in the flashbacks, um, actually manages to do some good here. She actually stops uh, the blow right here and seemingly wins the fight. And then Ecliptor says, good, but not good enough, smacks her upside the head, and then uh, he turns it into a lesson. He says, what did we learn? And K says, uh, to not take cheap shots. And she then Ecliptor smashes um, her staff, and he says, lesson here is never, is victory is never never assured. You must seize it completely and be certain that your enemies are soundly defeated. Until you have, you cannot let your guard down. So it looks like he's actually doing some, some pretty decent mentoring. And I think from the, the impressions that I'm getting is that Ecliptor was never like a purely bad villain character. He was maybe kind of an, an anti-hero sometimes or uh, operating somewhere there in the gray. He was maybe good at heart, but he still kind of worked for the villains or, or something uh, to that effect. Uh, at, at looks like from the last issue of Power Rangers that we saw when Ecliptor showed up uh, in and there to uh, to the Omega Ranger team, it seemed like he was trying to help uh, Astronomy here, so maybe that's that's something uh, that's going on, so we'll have to wait and see how, how that develops. Continuing with his lesson, Ecliptor here says, uh, you you must strike fast and true. If you're, uh, It is your life or theirs. It is your life or theirs. Uh, they will not give you an opportunity to decide. You know this. You live this. Your family's paid the price. And so basically saying, like, look, you have to do what you have to do uh, to win and to live. Otherwise, you're probably going to end up like your your dead families. So then actually we see here um, uh, Kay or Corone or Astronomo, whatever name you want to call it right here, going over the battle that she just had with the Flashman Rangers, um, calling out her mistakes. She's literally watching her own game tape to make herself better, which is kind of a cool uh, aspect of the character. Uh, then she finally calls a Cliptor back and kind of gives a status report and things like that. And then uh, she call or he calls her back um, because I think there's a tournament or something here um, going on where she is going to finally fight and then ascend to that level of, of Princess of Evil and be uh, second to uh, Dark. Dark Spectre. I believe as, 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 that's how I believe it is working here within the, the, the Power Rangers continuity. Uh, 
just as she's walking in, I do love uh, Scorpina right here, seeing some other uh, classic Power Rangers character there from the, the Mighty Morphin era. And then we here go to a another flashback where she is uh, fighting her classmates uh, as Dark Spectre. And I think um, this is another character here named Drogon or something uh, to that effect, um, where they're, they're fighting and just kind of showing off, just kind of seeing which one will eventually end up being the one that wins. Then over here we have a fight between a Divatox and Astronomer, which is really cool. I'm sure a lot of you Power Ranger fans that are more familiar, again, with both of those characters are really digging that. Uh, and apparently Divatox plays a little bit dirty. Uh, she starts um, calling out about uh, Kay's family and it, using it to distract her. So uh, Divatox can then eventually win the fight, as we see, uh, see right here, where she gets uh, Kay right there in the middle. And then over here in the locker room, the kids are, are being kids, and um, she's... No, you know, taking it to her and uh, just making fun of them and everything. And I have to ask, is this Andros? I know Andros is um, Caron's sister, but I don't know if, if he would be there or not. I'm not familiar enough with with his backstory. Again, I'm going to have to rely on you guys for some uh, for some extra information there. I do like this scene right here. It's kind of a competing back and forth scene between um, uh, Caron and Ecliptorus. How they're both saying that they won't fail. He won't fail her and she won't fail him. I really like that they're um, kind of cementing that father-daughter uh, relationship here. Even if it is a little bit twisted, you know, they're in Dark Spectre's um, uh, ranks and everything and everything that is going on. Uh, but it's nice that there's a little bit of goodness there with, with everything uh, that's going on with them. And then here um, he finally... Uh, there's a final confrontation here between them and she says um i don't why are we doing any of this and she says i don't care what the power rangers did um uh, to my family i don't care what the empire uh wants i don't care what my family would have wanted they're gone they're dead what they want it doesn't matter everyone talks about how incredible my parents were and how they serve the dark specter with pride they'd be ashamed of me just like you're ashamed of me you don't have to say it i know you'd rather have a different apprentice who'd want uh who would want poor k always losing, always beaten. Uh, uh, the only one left of her great family, a family she uh, I never knew. I don't have memories of them, just stories. The same story, they were slaughtered and I survived. For what? For people to tell me fairy tales uh, when they feel sorry for me? To try and make me feel better when I fall down for the hundredth time? Get back up, Kay. Do it for your family, Kay. Why? Why would I do all of this? Uh, for all I know, it's just a lie, and it is a lie. Uh, there's no proof they ever even existed. They're nothing, nothing. I'm nothing. And then with that, Ecliptor walks away and he actually goes and gets a locket with a picture of her and her brother, um, Andros. And I guess then that would confirm that that wasn't Andros there earlier in the book. My apologies for that. So I, I don't know a lot of this, so I get confused in it sometimes. And so she, uh, Ecliptor here says, uh, I took this off you all those years ago. Uh, I've kept it thinking I was protecting you by separating you and making you stronger. But that seems to have had the opposite effect. He says, uh, your brother. The locket was your mother's. She wore it every single day. And so that kind of gives her the strength. And she says, uh, you, you knew my mother? And he says, this locket is real. That means she was real, not nothing. Your family was great. Uh, but you'll never know that uh, that for yourself. Uh, the opportunity and a million more like it were stolen because the rangers thought your family was dangerous, that you were dangerous. You don't need to fight for a family you barely knew. After all, the Empire is your family now. Uh, instead, fight uh, to become what the rangers fear, to embrace the destiny they try to deny you. The anger and depression you feel should be a sh uh, should be aimed at your enemies and not yourself. Use it, but not as a weapon uh, to become a warrior. And I have never been ashamed of you. And so I really love that that bonding moment between them. And then here we flash forward to now, where they're having a final battle between the Divatox and uh, Caron here, or. Um, or astronomer, and they finally um, have it out. And as we see um, over here on, I think this next page, a big old super cool splash page. I really dig this one with all the different uh, fights and elements. Um, here we see uh, Kay actually finally win, and then she gets lifted up, beats Diva Talks right there. Really dig that. And then Dark Specter here says, uh, "You've earned your victory, but now you must earn your title. Uh, step forth." and be judged and so she actually gets 
um, like some kind of like a psychological test here. She gets shown her family and her friends, and she basically uh, has to shun all of them. She said, "It says you will fight for your family, and one day, if necessary, uh, die for them." Being uh, meaning that the family or the the empire and everything like that. And once she passes um, all of the the um, the the test there she finally takes her place she gets renamed uh, astronomer there as we see that cool shot there of her walking out with her uh, uh, daggers and her underheld daggers and everything like that and uh, there we go she says set course for Onyx so I'm sure that where this page ends that's where it picks up in um, Mighty Morphin I'm sorry uh, Power Rangers five that we read a, a week or two ago so guys um, I really enjoyed this I wish I knew the characters a little bit more I wish uh, wish and hope that one day Netflix gets those licenses back. And I can pick up where I left off and finish out those series. But hopefully you guys that are more familiar with the characters enjoyed this. And can let me know a lot of the stuff that I missed in this one down in the comments down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and what we do here at the channel, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. It would absolutely mean a lot to me. Until next time, guys, we'll see you at the comic shop.